And we are back with another episode of Commercial Roofing Radio. We got my buddy in the house, Jake Nix. You know, I, I don't get an opportunity to hang out with this guy often enough, in all honesty, but when I do, the conversations, they're deep. They're good, quality conversations where I feel like I can leave that conversation feeling stronger, more mentally uh tough, I guess, if you will, um, excited about the future, kind of changes my perspective on a few things. You know, we, we talk about life, we talk about business, we talk about family, personal development, you name it, and we have really quality conversations. Those are the type of people you want to surround yourself with. So I'm very lucky to have a guy like Jake here uh, to, to kind of share with you his story, and I think you guys can get a, a lot from it and not only did what's implementing your business but in your life so basically you know jake he at 20 years old he was homeless right janitor at, at planet fitness so he's cleaning the gym and, and he starts listening to to growth and development you know type material and it starts to change his perspective on things right he ends up starting his own company and then another company and another company right has an entrepreneurial journey that we'll, we'll dive into becomes an absolute rock star at, at roofing sales and when i'm saying rock star i'm saying big 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 money and we'll, and we'll get into that and he's going to tell you guys some tips i'm sure if, if he's willing to, to to share some some tricks and uh uh secrets if you will but jake what's up my man how we doing What's up, man? And I, you know, I'm always willing to drop secrets only, only exclusively for peakleads.io. That's it. Ooh, let's go, baby. Exclusively here at peakleads.io. No, what's funny, actually, this, my so this is my first, so, hey, my first you, you, podcast back in, in two years, actually, uh, from after going into kind of just, wow. uh, just a, just a personal kind of like retirement to where, you know, I was able to, to make enough and escape almost the whole rat race of life to really to really reset. So this is actually the first podcast um, I've done in almost in almost two years. I've turned down quite a few. Um, and when you asked me to come on, I thought, all right, let's uh, let's get this done. You know, I had I had to beg to get Jake on. He, he's living a different lifestyle. He was an absolute grinder. Now he's a, a stay-at-home dad, right? He, he, he was able to, to retire early and kind of think about what, what, what he wants to do next. I think the last time I saw you, you were about to, to, to fight Lee, Lee Haight. Is, is it right? You guys were about to box or something? <laughs> yeah, we, we were about to. Uh, and he, you know, he backed out, which was, it was, super, it was, just, it was super sad actually to see because a lot of people were uh, excited to see Lee get beat up. You know, a lot, there was a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and... You know, I think once once Lee kind of put the two and two together that uh, you know I've been bigger than him since I was in fifth grade. Um, I think I think he just common sense kicked in and he backed out. So super, it was super sad to see because a lot of people were excited to see that. So uh, I apologize to everybody out there. I did everything absolutely yeah. I could to put it together. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was that was pretty good. Unfortunately, it, it did not happen. We were really looking forward to it. You know, the, the boxing thing, like that's the that's the big seller nowadays. You got YouTubers doing it. You know, hey, why not take some influencers in the roofing space and go head to head until knockout? You know, that that sounds that's that sounds that sounds pretty interesting to me, man. But all right, hey, let, let's go into the the, the the story here though, because you have one heck of a story. And, and for me, you know, your greatest moments don't come from your greatest moments. They come from your greatest defeats, right? Because in those moments, you have to learn how to get back up. That is where you grow. That is where you strengthen yourself. That is how you learn how to get through challenges and how to handle situations in your life. Now, you're 20 and you're, and you're homeless, cleaning the planet, planet, planet fitness. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was coming from a poverty mindset. You know, I grew, I grew up in, um, I grew up in, you know, in, in poverty. And so it was, it was one of those things that once you graduate high school, you know, you're taught that you got to get a degree, um, and that you got to become a doctor or a lawyer. Um, and there's nothing wrong with those career paths, right? But that's what you're, that's what you're taught. That's what being successful is. You got to go to business school, 
uh, to start your own business. And I just, dude, I just didn't, I didn't fit in um, with the whole textbooks. I didn't fit in with the whole school um, system because it's like, you know, I knew that half, I mean, not even half, I'd say probably 95% of the crap that I was learning in school, I was never going to use. So it's like, it was almost, I was almost like this black sheep in school to where I barely made it. Um, and it wasn't out of, you know, it wasn't out of that I was dumb or anything. I just, I think that looking back now, I just knew the truth. I knew the truth that it was all, um, not all of it, but most of it was just, it was really just a sham. And it was designed by people who have, um, you know, who have really no idea what life is really like, right? You've got these college teachers and these teachers, um, trying to teach you things that they themselves have never actually done that they're just going by book knowledge. And if you and I don't know anything about the, the business world, that book knowledge is a, a small p- part of it, but there really is, there really is so much more. Um, so when I was, you know, 20 and I was homeless, it wasn't cause I was doing anything wrong in life. There was just a lot of, a lot of month at the end of my money, you know, when you're only making $600 every two weeks before taxes, um, you know, to afford an apartment and a car, it's just, it's just not a possibility. So I found myself, uh, couch hopping, sleeping in the, uh, in the, uh, tanning beds there at Planet Fitness, um, and, and really just kind of down, you know, down on life because there were so many other kids, um, uh, around me at that age where their parents really helped them out, but mine, mine didn't have the opportunity to do that. They didn't have the ability to, they were great, great people, but they just couldn't help me out. And I was not going to go, um, and live back, live back home. You know, I wanted an adventurous life. And so at that, you know, at that time, at that down moment where I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm essentially just a janitor, um, cleaning, you know, cleaning planet fitness. It was, it was hard, man. But then I started, I started listening to these motivational, um, these videos and said, if you can change your mind, you can change your life. And, and that's really what I just, I sat down in that moment. I said, all right, if I can change my mind, I really can change my life. Like I'm going to become, um, successful. And it was, it is, and it was such a long, long journey after that. It was really just a seed, you know, and then I've had to water that throughout the entire, my entire, you know, rest of my life where there's been, you know, there's been down times, there's been up times. Um, but at the end of the day, like it really started all out with that one moment where it's like, I decided, um, to become somebody different than I was. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you feel kind of like a victim when you, when you, when you were homeless at, at, you know, at 20 years old? Clean, cleaning, cleaning no, the gym. I mean, I didn't, I didn't feel like a, I didn't feel like a victim. I felt, um, I almost think the only word that I could describe was out, like, almost like an outcast. Um, just in the sense of, I did have the chance to go to junior college. Um, you know, I grew up, I grew up in a, uh, you know, small, really, really small school. Um, and so it's, it's not that those opportunities weren't presented to me because they were like, I could have taken those traditional routes, uh, but they just didn't, they didn't fit with who I was to sit through, to sit through class every day and learn all of these things. They just, they did not, um, they didn't align with who I, who I really was. So I didn't feel like a victim as much of a, as much of like, dang, why don't I fit in, in the societal norm uh, because I was smart enough. Um, I was all of these things that I could, you know, I could go to college and I could have taken that route, but I chose not to. So it was almost like this conundrum where it's like, dang, I feel, you know, I feel down, but I also made, I'm also the one who made this decision. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 100%. Yeah, it, I, you know, I went to college, I went to business school, I have a degree, I have a degree in marketing. If you look at my professors throughout my, my college career, that were specifically in marketing, they didn't think super highly of me because I didn't really pay attention, right? I was learning digital marketing from a textbook. Yeah. It, 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 and then also too, I think it, it, schools just in general, they don't adjust enough based off of learning styles of students. So for 100%. me, you were probably more hands-on, right? Yeah. We have to get our hands dirty, try it out, and that's how we learn. If we just consume it in the classroom by just you know them lecturing us or whatever it might be, we don't. There's no value in that for us. We have to get hands on, try it, and just get going with it and kind of learn on the run. Exactly. And two is like, why do I, you know, if I want to go to business school, why do I have to take a science class or why do I have to take all mm-hmm. of these classes that don't that don't matter? Because time, time is the literal most valuable thing. Like t- it really is. And for me to spend an hour, you know, an hour, hour and a half a day, 
um, in a class that is pointless to my life. Like it just didn't, it just didn't add up for me. And I think that yeah, that really does mm-hmm. that, that really can translate into, you know, in, in so much of our lives right now is like, dang, what is, you know, what are we giving our time to right now that actually brings no value? Um, to our mm-hmm. life, and that's that's what I'm big on. To where if I am gonna pay attention, right? That's why it's called pay attention because you're you're giving your energy um, to something because you only have a limited amount of energy that you can put put into. Um, and I'm big. I'm I'm huge. I would rather be I'd rather be doing nothing than something that that doesn't bring um, a result or fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You gotta think for college is to say a business degree, standard business degree, four years of school and I'm pretty sure two of those years are prerequisites so it's you know different classes that aren't even related to your degree and you know I get it they say hey you want to be well-rounded but at the same time it's hey I'm already you know 18 to 22 years old or whatever it might be I already did all that stuff. This is what I want to do, and I want to hone in on this. And they don't really hone in, right? They, they no. waste the first two years because they want to expand it, so it takes you so long. For me, it was good because I grew up. I needed to grow up. I, by the end of it, I was like super motivated and ready to go. But I, you know, for me, it was just growing up, maturing. That's, that was what was a benefit for me. You know, I enjoyed it. Intellectually, I didn't take a ton, in all honesty, from it. You know, but... Uh, I'm happy I did it, but still, it, it, there's some questions there, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I get I get where you're coming with on, on the on the school side of things. Now, you you dive into to personal development. Personal development has been a major component uh, uh, of my life for I would say since I was around 20 years old. It doesn't matter if it's YouTube videos, books, quotes. I'm all about it. I have why not tattooed in my body. Why not? I wrote down in 2014 when I was trying to figure out what I want to do after college. And it was all about I'm not going to miss any opportunities. Opportunities stand by quietly waiting for you to recognize them. Right? That was the truth, yeah. my mindset and that's what I ran with. <laughs> and it's made a major impact on my life in a positive manner. Now you, it, Think and Grow Rich, that, that's the, the, the book that stood out to you. You went from a, a, a poverty mindset. You have this book. What happens next? Yeah, I mean, too, and I want to. I want to point out that that book was written in like 1920. So mm-hmm. you know, it's it. These are the exact same principles that have been around, um, you know, for for all of eternity. Actually, if you really want to get down to it, these are these are like the secret, um, the secret codes. Um, is really is really what it boils down to. Like we are. You know, if you think about how many how many generations of people have become you know come before us, it's billions and billions of people who have lived on this exact same planet. Um, and so, for me, is I wanted to go back and I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn from our past. I wanted to learn from our history. I wanted to learn from those who have become um, successful. Because I think right now you have a, we have a really really hard time of really figuring out who's successful because it's so easy to 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 fake things on social media to where there's a lot of people following these guys that they shouldn't be following. Uh, but you go back in the day to somebody like Napoleon Hill. Um, these people are these people are the real the real deal. Um, to where you know King Solomon said, "There's nothing new under the sun." And you know, because of course, there's like there's new technologies and there's different ways. But when it comes to us as people, um, we've uh, you know we've we've been the exact same for for so long. And so for me, it was going back in history, I was figuring out who the truly successful people were that shaped our, you know, shaped not only our nation, uh, but this world and the things that they've actually done. Mm. So you, you, you dive in though, and does, does the mind start to shift? Do you start to look at more opportunities or how do you kind of, how do you define going from a poverty mindset to, you know, more of an enriched mindset that, that's full of growth uh, growth minded thoughts, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it takes, it takes a long time, you know, cause like right when you kind of like that, you, that tattoo that you've got, like, why not? Right. You, you then almost based upon the information that you receive, right. Where it says, if you can change your mind, you can change your life. All right. Then why not? Well, why not me? So the next time that I got into, just like what you said about opportunities are hidden, waiting for us to um, to see them, that they're they're all they're all around us. So as I soon as I seen an opportunity, 
instead of acting from the the old poor me mindset, the old um, the old version, I took that new information. I acted upon that. Like, why not me? So when I t- when I seen that opportunity before, when I would say I don't know, I then said I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And that was that solution. Was really, yeah, the the solution. solution. And, and to, yeah, faith faith is an action. Um, mm-hmm. So and it's acting upon that information because it's not real. When we read it in a book, it's not real in our life, right? There's a difference between knowing a fact, right? Knowing how to install a roof, like from, from the technical standpoint. And then there's a knowing from, you've actually installed roofs yourself. There's a, it's a totally, it's a totally different um, knowing. You can know with your mind, but then to know with your heart is a totally different um, thing. So it was, it was taking those, it was taking what I read in that book and then applying them into my life and the little things. Mm, so good. And let's just do a little practice here. So when you're looking at you know poverty mindset versus you know growth mind, growth mindset, let's just say or call it, or you know full of opportunity and abundance, it's usually just a perspective, the way you look at things. And rather than seeing the problem, you think about the solution. You get excited about you know tackling challenges because you want to see how you stack up to them. Yeah. Uh, you're very optimistic and see the good in things. You know you might you're going to be a, re- a realist, but no matter what, you look at uh, on the positive because it changes everything. If you, if you want, let's say you're a contractor out there, you've been in business for five years, and it's a grind. It's, it's always been a grind. Maybe you're not 100% where you want to be. Close your eyes for a second, right? Close your eyes for a second here. Picture your, you as the top-rated roofing company in your local market with 500 five-star reviews, right? You have an amazing website, you have an amazing sales team, you're doing $20 million a year, you're super happy with the pace of growth, you're profitable, your life is good, right? Now make it so clear, right, that you know what truck you drive, you know what your house looks like. Make it so clear, you, you, all you have to do is wake up and, and just walk into that vision. And what's weird is if you get really good at it and you, you act, like you said before, action, it's our, it's our, some of the stuff starts to happen. You're like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, 100%. And another great book, too, um, is, is The Secret. Um, I strongly recommend um, listening to The Secret. It's, um, but it, but it's, it's exactly that because life, like, life wants to see you win. But mm-hmm. life is not going to give you something that you don't know that you want. You have to set out and determine, hey, this is what I, this is what I want. Um, and then those opportunities will, will present themselves. Um, mm-hmm. I remember when I first got into um, real estate, right? I didn't have enough cash to start buying all these homes, but I figured out a solution to, to start buying these homes um, with, zero, with zero money down. And I was able to build up all my rental portfolios off of that. So when a lot of people think, oh, I don't have, you know, I don't have, you know, what it takes, every, you know, you have everything you need in your hands um, and in your mind right now to achieve to achieve your dreams. And once you achieve those dreams that you are capable of ach- mm-hmm. achieving, they get bigger. Um, and that was one of the things that I felt, you know, I, it was hard for me as I achieved everything that I ever I ever wanted. I had I had the exotic cars, I had the big homes, you know, I had the I had the luxury lifestyle. Um, and once I had had everything that I ever thought that I wanted, it's like, dang, where do I where do I go from here? And that was a, that was a really, that was a really hard thing because I had, I had achieved. So it's like, you know, for the people, for the people listening, it's like when you do achieve your dreams is, you know, what's next. And most people will say, well, I want an even better car or I want a bigger home or I want all these things and then I'll be happy. But it's, it's just the illusion. It's the dangling carrot in life to where it's like, if you do have, if you are at a good point now, um, one of the things that we're doing is we live, you know, we live really lean and you know, from our excess, we we give. And right now, I feed forty to hundred kids a day in Okara, Pakistan. Every single day, we feed them. Um, and I'm working on building an orphanage out there. So those are the things that I'm passionate about. Because when this life uh-huh. ends, you know, whether you believe in God or whether you don't, um, you are not going to get a congratulation about how many cars you had, about how much money you had in the bank account, anything whatsoever. Um, you are going to be you are going to be rewarded based upon what you did for others, for those less fortunate um, than yourself. And that's, that's my big goal now is storing up my, uh, my treasures in heaven to where it's like, you know, these kids can't do anything for me whatsoever when I, you know, we send our money up there and we feed them. 
Uh, but it's like I know that I'm doing I'm doing something in, to help the world above and beyond my own family. Mm-hmm. You know that that's. I mean, thanks for for doing something like that. That's 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 incredible, and you're gonna have such an impact on those kids. So, I I, I love that. Now, you know, you you kind of talking about how you know, you're having an impact that's outside just you, just your own family. But the thing is, is sometimes it's it's hard to even have the impact you want on your family, right? Because, you yeah. know, with, with work and everything like that, you're so busy, so stressed out, you think that, hey, the top priority is I need to take care of the business because that's how I'm taking care of the family. Yeah. And how does, you know, how does someone like that, how do, how do they balance it? Because you got to think, as an entrepreneur, it's hard enough to even be there as much as you want for the family. Yeah, and, and I think it really it really goes back to, you know, sometimes we get so close-minded. So I wanted to look back at people who have already been in my shoes, who've already had successful businesses and already had families. Um, and you really look at, you know, when, when the dad is so focused on the business um, and uses, you know, and uses the money to basically compensate uh, for his lack of being there, you, you see the kind of children that are produced out of that and you get these you know, you, a lot of times you get these these spoiled kids, and you know, a disconnect in the relationship, and that's not what I I didn't I didn't want that at all. Um, a quick story: we were in uh, a condo over in Siesta Key for the whole summer, and uh, our neighbor, um, our neighbor, I mean, this guy, the guy, he's sixty five years old, just sold his company for like two hundred and fifty million dollars, um, and like just this guy, like if if it was like the Dosecki's guy, like this dude is like, and he just won to the national dancing competition to like this big buff guy. And he told me a story about his kids, you know, when he had lost everything, um, you know, his kids were young and they had a big house and all these things and he had lost everything and he had moved into an apartment where it was a two bedroom apartment. And he felt so ashamed that he was only able to give his two kids um, one, you know, one bedroom apartment because he just, he was so ashamed. But as his son grew up, he came to me, he said, dad, he said, that was my favorite place ever to be was in that one bedroom. It was in that two bedroom apartment with you. And it just, and it just really hit him just so hard to know. It's like the kids, kids don't want, you know, kids don't want everything. They just, they just want you. And so that was kind of my thing for, um, taking some time retiring, Mm -hmm. Um, which is something I never, I never, you could have gone back a few years ago and said, Hey, you're going to, you know, you're going to retire for two years and there, there'd be no way. Cause I'm not that guy. I'm the grind, I grind, I hustle. Like we're going to build, uh, build an empire, but I really put everything on hold, um, just to be, to be more present. Yeah. Well, you I mean, well, yeah, when you're with the retirement thing, when we first met, I mean, that wasn't even that long ago. We were talking about business opportunities together and you're talking about different ideas strategies and stuff like that so you, you know you were you were you were ready to go for sure but I, I liked what you were talking about with with the kid that story with, with the child right the, the child didn't care about the nice things it was actually the quality time with the father we do the same things as entrepreneurs right we put this pressure on ourselves where it's like oh hey my family wants this lifestyle my team wants this type of thing whatever it might be but if you make everybody in your life feel valued, you get them excited about the day, right? you're, you're, you're helping them grow and develop, you show that, they, that you care, that's going to have a huge impact on an individual for sure. And yeah. chances are that's what they want the most. Obviously, we all want monetary things, but that's probably the top priority. And, then, and the way they look at you, too, is going to be totally different if you give them those things. Yeah, no, people and people will always forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they will never ever forget the way that you made them feel. Um, mm-hmm. And that's really at the you know at the at the end of things, saying how do you make how do you make other people how do you make other people feel how do you make your kids feel how do you make your spouse feel like those are the things that are that are truly um, you know the most the most important. Because I mean you I mean mm-hmm. you know I, I've gone through a divorce before you know uh, when I was twenty five. Um, you know, and, and lost and lost everything. Um, so I know how detrimental. Um, I mean, there's probably a lot of people going to even watching this gone through divorce. Like it's it there's there's it's, it's it really is just so um, so hard. And so that's why I kind of on this on this um, chapter of my life that I'm in that I'm in now is I'm truly working on the foundation of my life, my family's life. Um, and then whatever, you know, whatever's built on that is going to be on just such a rock solid foundation that nothing, 
um, you know, that really nothing can shake it. And that's for, you know, for us, you know, that, that foundation is my faith, my faith in God, my faith in Christ, right? To where it's like, you know, from he's, he's the one sitting from a bird's eye view up there to where he knows everything. Um, so it really boils down to now in this chapter of my life is putting all of these things in front of him where it's like, God, Hey, here's, here's what I'm thinking about doing. Uh, now you're the person who knows everything in the world. Is this a good idea or is it not? Um, and so that's, that's kind of the period that I'm in now where it's like, whatever, whatever I build next, um, will not just be, you know, another multi-million dollar company. It will be something that is a, a legacy company, um, legacy wealth, not only for me, but for my family, um, and for so many other, other people as well. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So let, let's go, let's go into that more, the entrepreneurial side of things, right? We, we, we talked about you, you as a, as a janitor, Let's go into the entrepreneurial setting now, or chapter, if, if you will. The first one, it was, it was actually picking up trash, right? And it, and it, it, didn't, it didn't work out? Or yeah. tell me that yeah. story yet. Yeah. yeah, so we would haul people's trash from their house um, to their curb on trash day at this, in this particular um, neighborhood. These are, you know, these are big, big houses where the driveway was. You know, like the driveway was a long, long way, right? So you'd have these people that didn't want to take their trash all the way down their curb. We'd do it for 20 bucks a month. Um, and then wash, wash the trash can out. Like that was, that was my mindset at that time, right? What's where it was, it was, you know, seizing an opportunity. Now that business failed because you, it's, you know, to get up at, you know, super early in the morning, to take somebody's trash down for 20 bucks a month when you only got a few customers, um, really doesn't add up. Um, so that failed, but it wasn't a failure. Now that I look back on it, it was a propelled because I acted in faith. I tried something. Um, and then life gave me a new opportunity. And every time I would do something, life would give me a bigger um, and better opportunity every single time. And if I managed that well, it seemed like it just came. It really, it really mm -hmm. did just come to me. I feel like you respond well too. So I, I could see you with after that business failed responding well. It seemed like since I, I've known you, always had a, like a good attitude to to a negative situation. Yeah, and it's and it, what's what's crazy is because. You know, looking looking back now, I really I see how silly that business was. Um, it, but going, but at that time, it wasn't silly, and I have to realize that that exact same person that was me. Um, and just now looking back, right? Hindsight hindsight is always twenty twenty. It's always easy to look back and you can see things. Um, you know, but at, but at that time, at what did seem like a failure. Um, just kind of going back to your tattoo, why not? Well, you know, mm -hmm. why not me to succeed? Just because this didn't work doesn't mean something else is not going to. Um, and then that's when I got into uh, outdoor outdoor designs and outdoor like pergolas and fireplaces. And it all started with one job um, where somebody asked if I knew anybody. Like somebody said, hey, do you know anybody that can build this? And I said, and I, I didn't know that I could. And I said, I can, I can, I can build that for you. I'm like, oh, okay, great, get us a quote. So I had no idea how to build this pergola. So I said, give me a, give me a picture. Give me a picture of what you're thinking about. Um, and so I took that picture to Home Depot with the size. I measured it out and I said, you know, how much wood do I need for this? And they said, here's the wood that you're going to need, all the cedar. They gave me a price. I said, great. I found a carpenter off of Craigslist um, who, you know, was a carpenter. And I showed him the picture and showed him uh, the size. And I said, how much can you do this for? And he gave me a price. I combined those two prices together for four, it was like $4,500 or something. I don't remember the exact number, but that, that was my, that was going to be my hard cost to build this whole project. Right. And so from looking up, I had seen that you should operate on a 40 to 50% profit margin. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to double the price. So I took him a price. I, you know, I, I got a logo made, a uh, cheap logo made. I found a free estimating. Like I did all this like for, I, I started a company on legal zoom for like $199. Um, and then a logo, a logo cost me, I think like a hundred dollars. So I think I was all into starting a company like 250. And yeah. you know, and this is, and I didn't even have a company before I talked to these people. But when they told, when they, when I seen that opportunity, I went off and I created the company. And it's funny because I actually told them the name of the company before I even had the company. I said, "Oh, yeah, it's out, outdoor, uh, yeah, outdoor creations. We do outdoor creations," um, and that's and that's what it became. And so I doubled that price and I brought them back the course for nine thousand um, dollars. They said, "That's that's great. Here's a check for fifty percent." And I had made more money in that one moment, in that one moment than I had in, I had in so long. And I thought, "Wow, if I can, I can." Now that I did it once. 
I can replicate it. Because if you can do it one time, all you, that you got to do is replicate it, and it grew from there to where I was from nine thousand, um, you know, dollar uh, pergola to doing one hundred twenty thousand dollar backyard remodels to building full houses. Like it was just from what it began, and I had no idea about the construction world either. But I said, I'm gonna find this out. If there's money to be made here, I'm gonna figure out how to do this and how to do it well. Mm. Mm. Beautiful, man. You give it, you're giving me the chills over here. That that's what it's all about. Yeah. Being resourceful, right? Running and gunning, making it happen. Making, Believing yeah. in yourself, right? Believing in yourself and, and just saying, hey, I got no other option. I'm in so deep at this point. I'm just going to figure it out. Yeah, we're, Let's and that's, go. And that's you know, it. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is, is it's so easy to create your own friction because anything you're, you're going for, anything you're trying to do, there's always like these turn back moments that it's an opportunity for you to either grow or step back. And, and when you're in a situation like that, it's like there were so many moments there that you could just turn back, but you kept going and you kept going and you, you kept going to the, a point where not only were you giving the proposal and closing that deal, but you actually built out a very successful business. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's 100%. Life, life favors the bold, right? When you take bold mm-hmm. action, um, mm-hmm. it's, it, it really, life does favor you. So take, take bold action. Um, you know, but the same, you know, the same, the same flip side of that, that same coin is do your due diligence on things because I did business deals that if I'd have done my due diligence on instead of acting in just this boldness, oh, we'll figure it out. Um, you know, I would have saved myself a lot of heartache. One time I bought a coffee shop from somebody, um, and then, you know, paid them all the money. I think it was like 55, $55,000, um, you know, for everything that's in there come to find out they didn't own anything that they sold me, it was all leased. Oh no. All of it was leased and it was like, there was nothing, there was nothing that I could do about it. The guy was already going through a bankruptcy anyways. Uh, you know, Smooth talked me into, uh, you know, like, hey, this, you know, we've got to get rid of it because of this thing. And I, if I would have done my due diligence, I would have saved myself um, a lot of, a lot of money and a lot of heartache on that one deal. So it's like, yes, be, you know, be bold. And when you're, when you're as young as I was back when I started my very first business, um, life kind of forgives you for not doing your due diligence, but as you become a seasoned, uh, seasoned businessman, it is be bold, but be bold with opportunities that you know that are going to pay you back and that are not going to steal that are not going to steal your time. That's that's a that's a really big that's a really big factor because it's mm-hmm. not it's, it, it's not worth doing if it's not going to add value to every area of your life, then it's really not worth doing. Well, you you, you got to understand so. You're a different person in that in that first business or that first chapter than you are a few chapters down the road. So you, your knowledge base, your wisdom, the way you you strategically think, your ability to make good decisions, all that stuff develops. So in, in the beginning, you kind of got to live bold because you got to be fast and you got to be furious and you're living on a prayer, kind of. Yeah. So. With nothing you to lose, go, you gotta you know, so you gotta go in all. Yeah, you, you have nothing to lose, right? That's yeah. the biggest thing. When when I started, I had nothing to lose. I was all time low. I had nothing to lose. Let it rip. Let's let's see what happens. Yeah. When you you get more mature, now you know there's more responsibility too. So now you might you know maybe it's family, maybe it's the team, or you know your employees and stuff like that that you have to take care of. So you have to be a little more strategic. But the the thing is is no matter what you eat, when you live bold, you're going to make some bad decisions every year. So yeah. for, for, for me, I've already made a few decisions this year that really cost me where I had to work more and, you know, it cost us financially a little bit, but I learned and I developed and I, and I dealt with it. So biggest thing, you got to be very forgiving to yourself. So you, you, you gotta think you make, so many decisions every single day, not every single one of them is going to be good. So if you're able to forgive yourself really quickly, you move on from it, you let it go, and it clears your mind to make a good decision for the, ne- the next time around. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that, and that, mm-hmm. just that, that, that point that you touch on is how quickly can you get back to base, right? Because it's like if you have mm-hmm. this, if your energy's here, right, this is where you operate at, and then you have a failure and it brings you back down, you're feeling down. Mm-hmm. How quickly can you get back to here? Because as long as you stay here, 
you are not going to be operating or functioning at the capability that you should. So how fast, how fast can I get here to where it is really admitting, hey, you know, a lot of for a lot of people, it's hard to admit they made a mistake. You know, even to themselves, right? It's the blame game. It's him, mm -hmm. her, um, or anybody else. But at the at the end of the day, we are all in charge of our own lives. We live in the greatest nation in the entire world, the U.S. Mm -hmm. of A, where you you're free. You're free to be you, and that means at the end of the day that you have to, that nobody cares about you as much as you care about you. And so that's really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody else did. I've had, I've had more, I've been stabbed in the back more times than, than most people can even, even imagine. I, I, I always say that one, uh, you know, one great leader I, I feel like I, uh, I'm kind of like is, uh, Caesar stabbed in the back by all of his friends. Um, you know, and that's, and that's really, but at the end of the day, when I look back at it is I allowed myself. To be. I allowed myself to be exposed. I allowed myself to trust when I should have verified. So even though you know all those things happen, that I and I've forgiven all of those people because at the end of the day, it's just it's just me. Mm, dude, so good. So I we we got to make sure we dive into the roofing and especially the sales and marketing because I remember the first time I met you it was me, you, and Randy Brothers. We were hanging out in Breckenridge area. You know, you came into Denver, we, we went snowboarding and stuff like that. Great, great weekend. But as soon as we sat down, we just meet and we start talking about different sales and marketing stuff, stuff that you were working on, stuff that we were working on. I was like, dude, this guy's got some, he's got some, some, some swagger. I like you, you were thinking different and that's what I really liked about you. And so we're going to dive into that here in a second about how you can you know, think differently and stand out. But how did you get into roofing then? Did you start a roofing company? Did you go directly into sales? Tell us a little bit about how, how you transitioned into roofing. Yeah, so it, it really it came from when I was doing the outdoor designs. I had a customer um, who was um, who was looking at doing an outdoor design, and then he came through with an insurance claim. He said, "Hey, uh, my insurance is doing a, a roof. Um, you know, do you know? I like you. Do you know anybody that can do it?" And just back to the same thing, I had never ever done a roof before, and I said. I can do it. And, um, and that was, that was the very first time. So somebody actually life, life approached me with that. So I had done, um, I had done two roofs and I'd never done roofs. I'd never done roofs before. So I did two roofs for this guy. Um, didn't really, didn't really make up, make any money because he, uh, he kind of like, he said, he said, well, you said I could pick any shingles that I wanted. And, and I was like, well, yeah, because I thought all singles were the same. But so the guy uses like it was it was like GAF like I I forgot I forgot which one it was, but it's like five bundles to a square instead of like three. I, I can't remember the exact one, but it was like so I go to my crew and they're like, hey, this is almost double the work and double the cost of material. So like I I think I lost like two grand, two or three grand on that first deal. Oh and so I really my didn't god, know. dude, the guy's loving life with this new GAF freaking probably top the line shingle <laughs> yeah I, for, I forgot i forgot what it was i've been doing tile roofs in florida for so long i i i can't even i can't even remember the last shingle roof i had done uh but it was you know so i lost a couple grand so i really at that moment didn't know uh, you know there, there was really that much money in roofing or that you could go door to door um and so going back to just like what i had talked about is where it's like all right if i can win once i can replicate this and win again so I made a little bit of money on his second house, thankfully, because I learned from that first one not to, you know, hey, you know, we can't do this this upgrade of a shingle unless you want to pay more. Um, and then two two guys had approached me where they were working for another company and they had seen what I'd done and they said, you know, hey, we you know we can go door to door, can we come work for you? Um, I said okay, and so that was the very first time that I learned go, to do, to go door to door. Um, mm. and I got the very first, the very first door that I knocked on, I got the contract and it's so funny. We didn't have anything roofing in our name. It just still said outdoor creations, which was a logo with like two axes. Um, we were a full on like, uh, you know, like a, a company that didn't have anything roofing about it. And I beat out four or five other established roofing companies on my very first time because I asked one simple question sitting at the table because at the end of the day, everybody's looking at the exact same insurance paperwork. But I asked the guy, I said, I said, sir, I said, what will it take? for me to earn your business. I want to earn your business more than any of these other people. What will it take for me to earn your business? And because the guy liked me and liked liked my energy, I got the I got the job and it was gangbusters from there on out. Um, knocking on every single door. No prior door-to-door -door knowledge, no prior um, anything knowledge and it really was just true grit, hustle, 
um, and energy to where we didn't have the best looking company, we didn't have the best looking anything. But going back to what I said earlier, the way the way that you make people feel is the most important. So we would make fe- people feel incredible, um, and not out of a not out of a, a salesy way. Um, it was just it's just who I it's just who I am, and you know that's one of the things that I've learned in the sales world is you can't you can't teach who you are. You know there there are some different sales tricks, there's some different closing, and there's some different ways to get to. Um, to a yes, but really at the end of the day, the way that you do anything is the way that you do everything. And you can't teach people to be who, who you are. You can only help give them the knowledge and they have to really get, get that for themselves. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you one thing. I know you're retired now, but I, I hope you don't stay retired for long because you know you, in sports, you see a quarterback – throw the ball and you're like wow you see tiger woods hit the ball you're like wow right you know you see people in business too and you're like wow and so man hey when i when i when i hear you talk about sales when i when i see you out there i'm like wow hey he's got it so hopefully hopefully we'll see you back on 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 the field for sure so let's go into the the sales size of thing right now you were you were knocking doors door knocking that's the real deal. Like, let's be for real. Like that, that's yeah. the real deal. That's, that's the pros. That's as hard as it gets in, in, in my mind. Uh, you were knocking doors. What was your mindset when you're going up to the door, right? What was the routine? Tell me about your day. Like, cause it, for me, I think it was just your approach. Like that was what I think would separate you. Like you talked about I think you like sleeping in the neighborhood one time or something like that, or it was, I remember you said, you did some live in the neighborhood. Like, so tell me about it. Like you, 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 you took it to another level to make sure. And we even talked about this. He, you know, he sold 30 million in in a year. Right. So we haven't been talking about that. So obviously this guy, he's got it. So tell me about this routine. Yeah. And it, and it really comes, it really comes down to, um, a, a great, one of the greatest sales people to, um, to, to mimic is Zig Ziglar. Um, so anybody who's listening wants to get better at sales, go back and listen to Zig. Uh, Ziggy started out in, in door-to-door sales of a much lower, um, lower product, um, a, like a lower, a lower cost product anyways. And it's just, you know, some of the things that I learned, I learned a lot from Zig. Um, but really, you know, when it's going up to that door, you know, so many times we're unloading with this, you know, unloading this pitch, right? Now, let me pitch, you know, let me pitch you. And that'll get some people. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was at the when I when I opened that door, and I realized, you know, I had to really, I had to put myself empathetically in that person's shoes. I probably just interrupted whatever that person was doing. So if I can't make them feel good or make them laugh from the very beginning, this is going to be very, very awkward, right? Because you got that. There's that brief moment when they open the door, right? Is this is this something that's going to benefit me? Is this going to make me feel better? What is this going to do? Or is this somebody wasting my time? So you have that really that brief window is how do I connect with this person on a one-on-one level? I remember one time I had seen a no soliciting sign that said, um, you know, don't solicit unless you're selling Girl Scout cookies. So I immediately, as soon as I saw that sign, I ran to Walmart. I bought I bought a few packs of Girl Scout cookies and I went and knocked on that door um, again. And the guy was just so, just so blown away to where it's like, if I would have done it any other way, this guy would have been pissed off and called me, you know, and, and just been pissed off and kicked me off his property. And that's happened to me so, you know, so many other times, but it's like, how do I actually, because you're, you're, you are, when you're knocking on that door, you're not just trying to make a sale. You're literally interacting with somebody whose life is more, their life is more important to them than your life is to you. And so you have to, you have to see that right to where when I'm knocking on this door, how do I connect with another person who is just as important as I am? Mm. Dude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. um, Unbelievable. Now I think, didn't you tell me about, you know, tell the story about, didn't you, you buy groceries for an older woman to, in one situation? Tell, Tell me about that. Yeah. I mean, dude, there'd be, there'd be so many times if I'd see somebody out doing yard work, if I'd see somebody out doing yard work, you know, an older person, um, I'd get out and say, Hey, let me give you a hand with that. You know, like go, I'd go help them do yard work for a few minutes. Um, yeah, another time, Hey, you need, what do you need? You know, uh, a lady couldn't get, um, to the grocery store because her, her, uh, caretaker or whatever it was, um, was off. So I went and bought her groceries and this was already, I, after I had the sale, you know, with her and, but really what it goes, you know, really what it comes down to 
is how do I make this person's life better and how do I interact, right? Because people, people buy from people they like. Um, so if I can, if I can get in and be, be somebody in these people's life, um, then I know, then I know that I've got the deal. And that's, that's really what, and then they'll refer because once I've, once I've gone out of the way and just over exceeded this person's expectations, then they're introducing me to the neighbor to where it's like that one person, once I blow, you know, blow away their expectations, um, then they're introducing me. I mean, I would have, I would have old ladies take me and walk me to all their neighbors, you know, influential people in the community. And that's, that's really what it came down to where it's like, all right, what, you know, who are these influential people? How do I just make their life just incredible by going above and beyond, dropping them a bottle of wine, drop it, you know, whatever, whatever I've got to do, you know, just to add that little touch, then they're taking me and introducing me to where sales, sales just flowed. I mean, I remember I would have communities just so locked up to where I was doing like whole, you know, whole, whole communities um, to where I'd go knock on the door and like, oh yeah, I heard about you. Let's go. I think my quickest sale from knocking on a door from somebody I had never met before First time meeting them, um, wasn't even referred. Four minutes, I knocked on the door, said, "Hey, you see, I'm look look at that, all those other roofs that I'm doing. I want to do the same for you." They said, "Okay, that sounds great. Where do I sign?" Four minutes uh, to a close, and that's and that's what happens. But you you can't you know a lot of people can't do that unless you've built rapport and communities to where it's like a lot of salespeople go out and knock out in a bunch of a bunch of neighborhoods. I picked one and I stayed in because I wanted to be a staple in that in that community. I want them to see my truck every single day. Because when I would first, when I would knock on a door, uh, when I first got started in the neighborhood, people who told me no, two months later were calling me back and saying that they were sorry that they should have gone with me and then signing back up. Um, and so that's the power of that recognition in the community. Yeah, I mean that that's that's next level thinking. That's but you, you got to think you, you have a couple options. You could either knock a door, have a hard close, close them. And then do that on repeat, or you could show up to the old lady's house, buy her groceries, right? Da di da da. Listen to the radio, picking up groceries, come back, right? And then have her walk you to all the customers. Da di da di da. Close, 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 right? Now, I and I, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but like, so. It, it, how could you how could you take that approach at like a commercial level you say right where you can kind of become a staple or create community do you have any thoughts on that yeah i mean find find influencers um you know for for me i still got a i'm still a partner in a roofing company um in florida in florida now i partnered with actually a new company in um in february is kind of coming on as an advisor an advisor role and brought some of my contacts over um, and we, we take care of influencers. So if you influence and you get us a job at a commercial company, um, we're writing you a check for 3%. I mean, and not like a lot of people do 500 bucks or whatever, but we're doing, you know, we're doing 3%, um, of the overall job, job to these people. And we're going above and beyond. They call, you know, our people, our people answer. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, at, at the end of the day, the Bible says your gift will make room for you and everybody wants to be taken care of, right? When somebody gives you, introduces you to this job or introduces you to somebody and they give you a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar job, um, when they see those big numbers and you write them a thank you card with a $20 gift certificate, um, you, you, some people are okay with it, but you know, for a lot of people, to me, it's a slap in the face. You know, like I tip, I t when I when I go when I go out to eat, I tip forty percent, right? Because the way that I do anything is the way that I do everything. I'm above and beyond in gener and being generous with people, um, which leads to bigger jobs. Because when another big job pops up, I'm the guy for it. And so, really, it is going above and beyond um, to taking care of the people who who send you jobs, um, and then and then it really just goes on mm -hmm. from there. I, yeah, I, I, I completely agree on that. So in, in business, sometimes we, we go into sales environments, we go into negotiations where it's like, I have to win this negotiation. This is the price or this is the deal. This is what we have to agree on. I'm not moving. It, business doesn't have to be a win-lose situation. It can no. be a win-win situation where you might not get as much from that but there's more transactions happening. There's more opportunities created. There's more relationships built. And so you're growing and it's actually a healthier way of doing it, right? Where if you're compromising and going above and beyond 
and just taking those people, you're, you're, keep, you're keeping those customers. They're referring you. So it's lowering costs in other areas anyway. So what we're getting, I think, is just being a good person. And also, too, is, is you, with you, your approach of, hey, the groceries or helping the yard, you're, you're very genuine with it where I, I, I feel like you actually are like, oh, this is more important right now than me closing this deal. That's, I think, what, what makes it so, so polarizing as well. You know, so kind of talk about, uh, talk about that, about being, you know, genuine and, 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 and making sure that you bring that into your business relationships. Yeah, and, and I mean, it starts in every area of your life, right? When I'm in, you know, when I wash my hands in the sink in a, you know, in a public bathroom, I wipe down the counter. Um, you know, I'll pick up little trash that's around there. I'll make sure, you know, for, we'll go out and walks where I'll take a trash bag um, and a trash picker upper and pick up trash in my neighborhood because that's just, it's just, at the end of the day, it's just, it's just who I am. And, and really that's what it boils down to. There's one, I had one customer a while back where I found out that, you know, their insurance wouldn't cover it. Um, you know, they couldn't do anything for me, but they were an older couple, um, and they needed all of their boxes broke down. So even though I knew that I was not going to be able to get a job out of it because they had already wanted to sign with me, but they couldn't because of their insurance policy, I still went. I still went in there, broke down all their boxes for them, put them in the recycling bin. Um, was able to pray, you know, pray with them. Nothing ever came of that. Literally nothing whatsoever. And I knew that I would not get anything from that. But it still didn't. It still didn't take away from who I am. And so it really pops into the to the little things. And it's mm-hmm. you know, and then you when when that's the way that you are, it's like you don't have. It's it's not salesy. It's not anything. It's just that's hey, that's that's who I am to help you out. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's do. Let's do this. Let's do. How about? Can we do a role play? Will you, will you, I mean, I know you're probably a little rusty, but will you do a role play with me? Let's do it. Yes. Let's go. Are we going to be? Are, right. you gonna, are you going to be an old lady? Uh, no. Let me. Let me be. Just let me be like a. How about a forty-five-year-old male? Forty-five-year-old male. Okay. Name. Name me. Name me Jim. My dad's name is Jim. So I'll yeah, be my Jim. Dad's, my dad's name is Jim too. Hell yeah. Let's go. All Man, right. So I, knock I on my door. Some years, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. All right. Knock on my door. Hello? Hey. How are you? Uh, good. Who are you? Who are you? Hey, I, uh, my name is Jake. I am actually in the neighborhood. If you look, you look. Oh, right you're a roofer, street, aren't you? I, yep, yeah, I, I am. Have, have you had other people come knock on your door? Uh, yeah, you're number 10, I think. Oh my gosh. I always say number 10 is the best though. <laughs> All right. What's up, Jake? Nay, I, well, I, listen, thank you, thank you for taking like 15 seconds. I know you probably got something so valuable going on. You've talked to 10 people um, before me. You see other people in your neighborhood getting roofs. What has deterred you from, have you gone with anybody? Or what has deterred you from, you know, from getting, you know, adding a valuable asset to your home, like what you see your neighbors do? Well, it's all the door, it's all the door knockers. I'm trying to like let, it, let everything settle for a little bit. It seems like every two seconds I got one of you guys knocking on my door. So I'm like, you know. I want to make sure you know, I do the right thing, kind of just kind of waiting for a second. Yep. No, I, 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 completely, I completely agree. So let me, I'm going to solve your immediate problem because you don't want, whether I earn your business or not, I want to solve your immediate problem. One of the best ways to deter that, even if you don't have a roofer, right? Maybe you're thinking about a roofer, whatever it is, you don't want anybody else knocking on your, uh, your door. Just let's, let's write out a quick, and I've actually got a free sticker. Um, these are actually what I've actually printed out in these situations. It says, mm. my roof is already taken care of. Please don't knock on my door anymore. So I just solved that immediate problem for you. All right, well, thanks. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just place it right here. Now, I get it. Like, I get it. You had all these people. It's, it's annoying. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, like, these people are getting new roofs for a reason. There, there is damage to it. And if you look right here, let me show you what your neighbor, I haven't even seen your roof, right? But if you're, if this is a hailstorm or the wind, a windstorm, whatever it is, you're probably going to have typical damage. So would you mind if I showed you your neighbors real quick? Sure. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So here's, here's what we're looking at. And here's all of the reasons why, right? When these, you see these lifting shingles right here, you see these hail damage spots, whatever this damage is that we're talking about, here's what can happen in the future. And so here's why it's so important to get this done. So I get it. We've just solved your problem. You're not going to have anybody else knock on your door. Uh, but I really would like to sit down and show you everything that we've got, that what we can do for you, we can solve this problem. And even if you don't go with us, I'm not, you don't have to go with us, Jim. I, I get it. I get what position that you're in. But at least you can now become an informed buyer because there's so much misinformation out there. There's so many sleazy salespeople. There's so many sleazy companies 
but I'm not one of them. So at least let me make you an informed buyer. Let me show you all of your options. That way you can make the best decision because you look like a guy who will make the best decision for your home. All right, let me, let me get my wife. That's it, yeah. Uh, hey, 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 hey. I, I can't actually do it. I can't actually let's... even do it right now, Jim, because I've got, I've got another appointment. But what I can do is I can come back tomorrow. Will that work? <laughs> And a lot of times uh, so I would delay, I would delay the sale purpose. I would delay the meeting purposely because a lot of times you can feel somebody's energy, right? If they're, if they're just like, if they're being nice and giving you a moment, I, a lot of times I don't want to take that moment because it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right to where I would say, even if I could do the yeah. meeting right there, I would say, no, no, Hey, listen, I'm not, you know, do your, re do, do your research on my company. Let me text you real quick. Let me text you reviews. Let me text you all this stuff. That way you're an informed buyer because people people want to look at the information for themselves now in this digital age. So I would give them the information that they needed to qualify me before sitting down, then coming down to sit at the kitchen table. And that made it a much easier transaction because once they were sold on me as a person and they were sold on my company, then we're sitting down and doing the paperwork. Mm. Dude, that is so good. That's what I'm talking about with, with next level thinking right there. To, 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 to purposely delay this sale that way. And, and that's what I'm talking about. That is, there's a certain magic to it. It's a, a beauty, right? There's a, it's a craft. So that was awesome. Now, what about, what about marketing though? Because, you know, we, we talked about marketing together and we really clicked on that stuff. You know, on the sales side, I'll just be straight, straight up. You're, you're above me, right? I, mean, I, I watch it and I'm like, wow, marketing, I feel like we can really connect, uh, connect on. What were you doing at, at a marketing standpoint or a brand standpoint or lead generation standpoint that helped you get to that, that 30 million? Uh, so I didn't do it. That was all door to door. Um, it, because there, there's so many, there's so mm, many people, unless they're doing crazy. things like, yeah, unless they're doing things like you guys, right, where you're doing it differently, like people, people see, I forgot what the number was, but I think it was like eight to 10,000 ads a day that people see. Um, and then especially when it comes to a storm market is a lot of times people get oversaturated um, with these ads and with these leads. And so for me, for me, the best connection wasn't a, um, an ad or a lead where they're talking to three other people. For me, the best connection was I was the only person that they were talking to. So from when it comes to the roofing marketing world, um, I mean, I know, I know what's, I know what works, but I never, I never had used it. It was all, it was all door to door, um, word of mouth, and grew it from there. That's crazy, man. Well, hey, you, you are, uh, you're great, man. I, I appreciate you coming out of retirement to to hang out with me. You know, I, I hope to see you out there again. Hopefully, in the in the same industry, so we get, we have a reason to to hang out more. That would, that would be great. Uh, we got a game here, and then after the, after the game, what we'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll kind of let you close us out with, it could be a positive quote, it could be, you know, a prayer if you want, it could be a book suggestion, something to close us out with. Oh, hey there. You come here often? <laughs> I feel like I see you every Wednesday, and you know, you, you definitely caught my eye. I'll tell you one thing, you know how to stand out from a crowd. You already got a lot of great things going for you. I mean, I see your company, I see what you got going on. I want to be part of it. You know, how, how about I give you my number and you, you send me a text? 720-796-7000. Hey, yeah, it's Nick, right? Peakleads.io. I think I think we can help you generate some commercial roofing leads. Looking forward to chatting. Talk soon. But we have right now a game, and it is who wants to be a roofing millionaire? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you get two lifelines. The first one is 50-50. It will remove two of the wrong answers, leaving you with a 50% uh, chance of getting the answer correct. And then you phone a friend. So basically, you can, you can call one person. If they don't pick up, that's too bad. you lose the lifeline. All right. Now, the questions are like made it. by... Why, is, there, uh, 
Do I win like a Peak Leads IO hat or something? We got a shirt, actually. Hey. I, I, I oh. like Big Roof's shirt on the line right now. I love it. Let's see I'm... how you do under pressure. Now, these questions are written by yours truly, Dynamic Dermot, over here at, at peakleads.io. And it's all about, you know, things we find about you online and, and make it more about things that you, you should know about or, or, or like. So the, the, the first question is, you know, you, you've already have some podcasting experience, right? You, you, you have your own, you, you've been on this one, and you've been on the Circle Grocery with me, right? You, you, you've done the content game, you've done the podcast game. Now, Joe Rogan is the number one podcast in the world. What do you think is the number two in the world? Is it A, Crime Junkie, B, The Daily, C, My Favorite Murderer, or D, Commercial Roofing Radio? Oh, definitely Commercial Roofing Radio. It's probably number one. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's probably number one. So what about number two? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely Commercial Roofing Radio, final answer. Is that what you're, is that what you're, going, you're going with? Oh, I can't, I can't say anything but the truth. You know, I, unfortunately, it, I thought the same thing, but it's actually Crime Junkie. It's a me. crime junkie. Yeah, I know. I know. I think it's got to be something with the analytics. It's not uploading for, for us or something. Correctly. I think, yeah. So I think I'm uh, pretty sure I got that. I got that one right though. Yeah. I think everybody's listening to this, you know? <laughs> um, all right. So now we're going, we're going Florida. All right. We, we, okay. we're, we're out in Naples. Now, roughly how many alligators are in the Florida Everglades? Is it a... 10,000, B, 500,000, C, 200,000, or D, 8,000. Oh my goodness. Roughly. Did you, who counted them? That's what I want to know. That is a great question. <laughs> where, where do most of these stats come from is, is the question. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Uh, let me do, a, I'm going to do my 50-50 uh, uh, on this one. All right. So we have eliminated... 500,000 and 10,000, leaving you with 200,000 or 8,000. In the Florida Everglades, I'm going to go with 8,000. Final answer. It's C. 200,000. No. There's over 1.5 million in the entire state of Florida. That's insane. Mm hmm. I do need some new gator boots. Mm, you got boots? No, I'm honey. Now that are you a cowboy? You, you, uh, you spent some time in Texas. Are you a cowboy? Uh, yeah, I spent a lot. I, I maybe a little bit. You know, a little bit. Yeah, not a, maybe a little bit. Not all. Not all the way. I mean, I I grew up in Just a little uh, bit. Grew up in uh, on the plains of Colorado, and yeah. you know, farm farm country, ranch country. So we grew up branding, uh, branding cattle, and all kinds of things. So I I got I got a little bit in me, but I wouldn't say I identify as it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, all right. So the, the, the game changing book for you was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon yep. Hill. When was this book written? Was it A, 1937, B, 1951, C, 1925, or D, 1936. 1925. Hey, 1937, Jake. No, Man, for no, a no, stud, no, no, you no, know, no. You're, no. You're 0 for 3. You're 0 for oh 3, my man. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I can I can oh uh, I can gosh. only only hope you you get these next two right, but we'll see we'll see at least one. And remember, yeah, you, people, you still people have a think lifeline, my, every everything right? else you know, that I talked about was just garbage now because I can't I can't get. Yeah, it was right. just a hoax. He he failed at the <laughs> game. So remember, you have one more lifeline though if you need it, which is phone a friend. All right. Now it's never too late to find success in life. You interviewed the infamous Paula Dean on your podcast. How old was she when she started her business with $200 and started finding success? Was it A, 36, B, 55, C, 50, or D, 42? 
Ooh, it was she was fifty. Forty-two. Oh my uh -oh. gosh. Uh oh. You know, at, at this point, I you know to be honest, with you, if you're going over three, I probably would have just made a phone call and asked right uh -huh. there because I was it's not looking so pretty one. for you. But we got one more question. Can you I'm be the first? Can you be the first contestant to go zero for five? <laughs> that is the question. One of my favorite people, a person that I enjoyed five, having a conversation man. with, a person that I feel educated me to be a better salesperson and told me a great story how to improve my my mindset, right? How to achieve my goals, how to find happiness. But the dude sucks at trivia. Zero for four. Bro, can, like, he, can, like, can he just, bounce just back? Real quick, can honestly, he bounce like, back? I'm garbage at trivia. Like garbage. Yeah, oh, I am too. I'm so glad that I'm not on the other side of this thing because I can, I'm so bad at trivia as well. So, luckily, you're in that position and not me. All right, so we have the final question. Hopefully, he will not go for five. You're living in Naples, Florida now. What is Naples' self-professed nickname? Is it blank, capital of the world? All right, let me repeat that. What are, what is Naples, Florida? Like blank capital of the world. Is it A, tennis, B, golf, C, angler, or D, wine? Hmm, all right, I'm gonna phone, I'm gonna phone somebody real quick. All right, who are you calling? Uh, let me, I'll, I'll let you Who are you calling? Put it on speaker. All right, I got him on speaker. Hello. Hey, Nick. Hey, I got a quick question. What is Naples' uh, self-professed? I've only got a few minutes or a few seconds. Naples' self-professed, um, uh, like, like nickname. Or is it tennis? Is it wine? Like, what is it? <laughs> I've never had anybody do this, but I guess I, I guess for the creativity, I got to give it to you, and I, and I don't want you to be the first guest to go for five because I that'd be that. embarrassing. It's B golf. B golf. Okay, thanks, man. All right, All right I'm gonna go with uh, B B golf. Final answer. And it looks like Nick Perret, who you gave a, a call to. Has saved the day and once Let's again, go. and you did not go Let's over go. five. Congratulations. Unbelievable. Great work. Great work. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, my man. You get to close us. You, you get to close us out. All right. So whatever you want to leave the guests, let's close us out. Let's close this thing down. We're, we're ready to go home. Great show, man. I appreciate yeah, you. Let me just, you I'm uh, just gonna, I'm out. gonna say a quick blessing over everybody. Um, you know, real real quick. So there's mm. there's so many things you know, going on that we really don't know about. And one of my, um, my business partners actually committed suicide last year. Um, and I had no, you know, there was no, nothing that would have basically told me, um, no signs that this was, that was going on like right after Christmas. So I never know, um, you know, what people, people are going through. So, um, right now I just pray for anybody that is listening to this. I pray that, pray that God would just, just bless you. Um, and that would show you, show you what you truly, truly need in life, not just the things that you think that you want right now. Um, I pray for explosive growth, explosive favor um, on each one of your roofing companies, that you would just be doing, doing, doing more business, um, have the right quality people be attracted to working in your business, um, and that life would just, life would pan out the way that you, that you are hoping and praying that it would be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen to that. Everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you and we'll see you next time.